Hi and welcome back to freephotoshop.com and video number 7 in our beginner's guide to Photoshop Elements. I'm hanging out here inside the organizer and this time I want to select two photographs. I want to select this version of the lion that we just finished working on and I also want to select, let me go ahead and open this stack and I'm going to go ahead and select this image of the gorilla right here. So I'll give that gorilla a click and then I'll just find that lion image once again and to select the lion in addition to the gorilla I'm going to control click it and that's a command click on the Macintosh by the way now I'll come up here to the editor button and select the full edit mode like so and by the way if you'd like to work along with me I'm providing all the images I work on inside the project files that are available on the freephotoshop.com website Okay, the first thing I'd like you to do is to make sure that the project bin is open down here. If it isn't, then you can open it with this little arrow down here. And you should see both of the images available to us. Go ahead and double click the gorilla image to ensure you've got it loaded into your workspace above. And what we're going to do here is select just the gorilla. So we're going to leave all of this grass and shrubbery behind. And then once we have the big guy selected, we're going to move him into the lion image to create a flyer or poster effect. It's going to look great by the time we're done, trust me. So how do we select the gorilla? Well, remember we've got our selection tools up here in this area of the tools palette. We've got our marquee tools where we can select either a circular or rectangular shape. We've then got our lasso tools and we'll come back to these in just a few moments. Then we have our magic wand tool that we won't be using inside this video but if you want to find out how it works because it can be a very useful tool then check out the magic wand tutorial available right here at the freephotoshop.com website for more information on that one. Basically what it does is it selects pixels in the image based on their luminance value. Okay finally we have a quick selection tool and our selection brush. The selection brush allows you to create a selection outline with what is effectively a paintbrush and then we'll come back to the quick selection tool in just a second. Now before we go ahead and actually try and make a selection I want you to know what a selection outline looks like. So let's go ahead and select the standard lasso tool from its little sub menu here and I'm going to just drag with the left mouse button down all the way around the gorilla's head just like so and what we end up with is a selection outline and these little things that are moving are called marching ants and they represent the boundaries of the selected area so anything inside is selected anything outside is deselected the interesting thing here is that we can now apply any type of adjustment and it will only apply inside the selected area for example I'll come up to the enhance menu select adjust lighting and then click levels. Now if I move these sliders around I'm only changing the selected pixels. Okay I'll cancel out of here. I can also just move the selected area around by dragging inside the selected area itself. I'll click undo to put the selection outline back where it was. Now say I want to select some more of the gorilla. Well I can do that by coming up to the options bar and we have four little icons right here. The first one is going to allow us to create a new selection. The second one will allow us to add to a selection that's already active. The third one allows us to subtract from an area of an already active selection. And finally the fourth one allows us to find the intersection of a selection outline. For the moment we want to select the add to selection option and now you can see that the lasso tool has a little plus sign by the cursor. Now I'll click and drag around the rest of the body in order to select the entire gorilla and once I'm done, I'm do doing things really rough here by the way, but once I'm done and I release the mouse, I'm adding that new outline to the already selected pixels. If I wanted to subtract a part of the selection outline, I'll change things up here to the third little icon and then I'll just draw around the area I want to deselect and there we have it. Okay, I'm going to come up to the select menu and choose the deselect option to completely deselect every pixel inside the photograph so we can start again. Okay, now 
Let me just quickly show you the two other lasso tools, starting with the polygonal lasso tool. Here we're creating a straight edged selection outline by just clicking to lay down points. So if I click here, I lay down a point. If I click again, I get another one. And you get the idea, things are just continuing in that vein. Let me just come up here to the select menu once again and choose the deselect command. Now I'll just switch over to the magnetic lasso tool and all we're doing here is just clicking once to begin the selection process and as I move the cursor around Photoshop Elements is trying to trace edge detail inside the photograph based on the options available inside the options bar and I'm just going to drag a complete circuit and then to create the selected area I'll just come over here to the beginning of the selection outline and just click the start point like so Okay, finally, let's check out the quick selection brush, see if we can get any better results from using it. So I'll come over here to the toolbox and select it first and foremost. Then I'll come up to the select menu once again and choose the deselect command to start afresh. I'll just click the new selection box to make sure we're creating a new selection outline. And what we've got here is basically an automated selection brush. I'm going to just open up the brush options and raise the brush size to a value of 350 pixels. Now if I come down to the image and just click a few times in the head, I'm going to automatically select the head. Now I'll come to the left hand side of the gorilla's body and I'm just clicking by the way, I'm not dragging, just clicking with the mouse. And here's the problem with automated tools, you don't have any control over them. Here you can see that we've gone ahead and selected way too much of the image. So I come up to the options bar and change this to subtract from selection because we want to remove some of the selected area now. And then I'm just going to click a few times in the greens over here. But ultimately we're not really getting what we're looking for. The problem is that the fur on the gorilla is causing us a big headache. So we need something a little more able to select these kind of objects. I think the magic wand tool would probably do the best job out of all the tools over here but we're going to use a different method for this particular project. I'd like you to revisit the select menu and choose the deselect command first and foremost. Now I'd like you to come over to the image menu and from the bottom here select the magic extractor. Now what we're going to try and do is attempt to extract the gorilla from his background. And you can tell right away we mean business by the sheer size of this dialog box. It's almost like a separate program nested inside Photoshop Elements that's going to do all the work for us here. Now the first thing I'd like to do is come over to the brush size and up the size to 100 pixels. And what's going on here is that we've got two brushes over here in this mini toolbar. That's where the brush comes from. One to indicate the area of the image we want to keep and one to indicate the area of the image we want to delete. So I'll start things off here by selecting the foreground brush tool from the top here. And I'm going to paint a series of lines across the gorilla like so. Just trying to help elements out here by giving it the best idea of exactly what we want to keep. So I think we've got as much of that as we need. Next I'm going to switch over to the second brush down, the background brush tool. And now I'm going to paint a few more lines to indicate to elements the area of the photograph I don't want to extract. So just making it as obvious as I can. Okay, that's great. Now let's look at the touch-up selection of the Magic Extractor. The Feather option allows us to introduce a soft drop-off between the selected region of the image and the unselected region. Now I'm working with a large image here. So I'm going to want to enter a value of, say, 5 pixels. The value that you enter may be different. That's always going to be the difference here. That's always going to change from image to image. So it's usually best to experiment. Next, we have the defringe width. And what's going on here is that when we extract the gorilla, we're likely to get some of these greens from the background, almost discoloring the gorilla's fur. So in other words, some of the gorilla fur may turn a little green because of the influence of the background. To stop that happening, we could increase the defringe width. However, in this project, I'm going to leave that well alone. And when we're ready to see what kind of job we've done with these brushes over here, we can click the preview button and things will take a little while to preview here. 
And while that's happening, let me just tell you that we can change the brush color over here if you find the colors don't stand out enough from what you're trying to extract. In this example, it's fine, but there could be images where you're trying to extract an image that's the same color as the foreground brush, for example. You can change that by changing these swatches right here. Just a handy little tip that I'm trying to pass across to you. Now, when Elements has finished, you'll notice that the image background has been replaced by transparency. But we can still work on the image if we need to. And we can do that by coming over to the preview options and selecting original photo. Now, if we want to get a little closer to any of the edges, we can just take our foreground brush and paint in a little closer to the edge like so. Maybe just a little more up here too. That looks cool. Then we'll just hit preview again to see if we get a more pleasing result. And I'd say that looks good. Now in order to accept that, I'm going to hit OK. And we now have our extracted gorilla. Perfect. Now we need to move the gorilla into the lion image. And I'll do that by coming up here to the top left of the toolbox and selecting the move tool. Now I'm going to just left click and drag the gorilla. See, I'm just dragging him around. I'm going to drag him over to the lion photo until I see a little plus sign and then release the mouse. And that is going to move the contents of the gorilla image into the lion image. And the beauty of it is we have the gorilla now on his own layer over here inside the layers palette. So it gives us complete flexibility in what we want to edit. Now at the moment he's way too big for his surroundings and he's also in the wrong place. So whilst we've got this bounding box around him, I'm going to control alt spacebar click a few times until we can see the whole layer. That's command option spacebar clicking if you're using a Mac. And that's just going to zoom us out. Now, if you can't see this bounding box around the layer, then you may need to come up to the options bar whilst you have the move tool active and tick this little box here that says show bounding box. Okay, next we need to move him into place. So with the move tool active, I'm just going to drag him to the bottom right hand side of the image. And that's perfect. You should feel things snap into place like they did for me. That looks good. Okay, now you should also be able to see these eight small boxes on the edge of the bounding box. Well, they represent transformation handles of the layer. If I hover the cursor above any of these, you can see that the cursor switches into a little double arrow icon. And I can now drag the transformation handles around to get the layer the size I want it. And I'll say around about this big is good for our purpose. To confirm the changes that I've made, I'm going to click the little green tick button and things are looking good for us. Now let's zoom back into the image so we can see all of it on screen. And the quick and easy way of doing that is to come over here to the toolbox and double click the hand tool. Okay, finally we need to go ahead and blend the gorilla into our picture here. And you'll notice that at the moment, if I control spacebar click to zoom in, that's command spacebar clicking on the Macintosh folks, you'll notice that down the left side of the gorilla's fur, things are just a little too light really for what we actually want it to look like. We want to darken up the fur around this region. And you'll also notice that if we look at the gorilla's head here, Great job of extracting, but the fur up here is a little red. So we're going to go ahead and fix that too. Okay, I'm going to zoom out again by double clicking the hand tool. And I'm going to show you a couple of blending techniques here that's going to solve all our problems. Trust me. I'm going to start off by duplicating the gorilla layer. In fact, before we do that, we can double left click the name of the gorilla layer and call the layer gorilla, like so. And now I'm going to drag the layer onto the new layer icon at the top of the layers palette here to duplicate it. So we now have two of them. And in the short term, it looks like our problems have been worsened. But if I come up here to the word normal and give it a click, I get a huge list of blending options. Now, what we're essentially doing here is determining how the active layer interacts or blends, if you prefer, with the visible portions of the layers below. Now I already know that I want to darken the fur around the edges and I can do that by coming up here to the darkening modes, this little section here, headed by the darken blend mode itself. 
and I'm going to choose the most useful darkening blend mode of them all, and that's Multiply. Now concentrate on the edge fur around here, and let me show you just how things looked before by turning off the layer, and then see how much better things look around the edges if we turn it back on again. Okay, now to fix the interior, because we've darkened things up too much in this area here, I'll come across to the toolbox, and then select this little pink eraser icon, and make sure we've got the standard eraser tool selected by choosing it from the flyout menu here. We don't want the magic or background eraser. Now before we start erasing, I'm going to quickly rename this top layer. I'm going to call it something like Edge Fur, and that's good. Now I'm going to make sure I've got the correct size eraser active. I can change it, remember, by using the bracket keys on the keyboard. Left bracket makes it smaller, right bracket makes it larger. Now with the Edge Fur layer active in the Layers palette, oh, one more thing actually before we go ahead and erase part of this layer, I want to make sure that we're working with a nice soft brush. And I can make the brush softer by holding down the Shift key on the keyboard and pressing the left bracket key a couple of times. Now we're ready to roll, I'm going to simply brush away inside the body of the gorilla, taking care not to take out those nice dark edges. Just a click here and a click there, and things are looking good. The soft brush is hiding the transitions for us, so you can't actually see the difference between the two layers. So no one's going to be able to tell where the edit starts and where it ends, and that's just as we want it. Now let's get rid of the red tinge on the gorilla's head. And as I said, I'm going to do that by using a really handy technique. And I'm going to come over here to the toolbox, and I'll click and hold the brush icon, and select the color replacement tool. Now I've got a whole video devoted to the color replacement tool, available as always on the free photoshop.com website. So for more information, check that one out. But for now, I'm going to zoom into the gorilla's head, and I want you to set some key settings up here in the options bar. We want to make sure that the mode is set to color. The sampling is set to once, which is this middle button here. The limits are set to contiguous, and we have a tolerance of 100%. Next I'll find me a decent sized brush with those bracket keys, and then I'm going to sample a color that I want to replace the redness with. So I'll hold down the Alt key here on the PC, or the Option key on the Mac, and I'll get this little eyedropper. Now I can click to set the color, and then make sure that the Gorilla image is active in the Layers palette, because that's the one causing the problems. And then I'm able to brush away the redness by simply brushing away here with the Color Replacement tool. And I can sample as many times as I want to, by the way, by Alt or Option clicking a good color, and then brushing away again. And it can sometimes be a really good idea to go around the edge of the whole layer here, just to make sure things are looking as good as they should all the way around. I'm going to come back up to the toolbox, however, and double click the hand tool to give me a good view size for the image. And I'd say we're there, finally. Things are looking good, and I'm happy with this finished product. In the next video, we're going to retouch some of these blemishes. We're going to remove things like this grass coming from his mouth. We're also going to crop the image down to a perfect size, as well as add some of our own text. Well, thanks for joining me here, as always, here at freephotoshop.com, and I'll see you in the next video.